<laughs> That's right, I've been fired, <laughs> right? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I want to share something with you and praise report with you today. It speaks to the power of God, His Word, and His authority in our lives. Amen. To bring you also encouragement in this understanding. And uh, there are a few people here who know uh, some about this with regards to the timeline and uh, scripture also. So, uh, Pastor, Pastors, Teresa, feel free to jump in on this um, as I share this. And I'm going to bring my daughter up here in just a minute. Actually, I'm going to bring her up here right now. Amen. This is my daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I love you, Jesus. And uh, how long ago were you diagnosed with cancer? Two months, almost. Not even two months. Not even two months ago. And she had. Back, back up. Start with her symptoms, what she was dealing with. She had been fighting the symptoms of this for many months before that. Woke up in great pain, called me, we pray together, and uh, sometimes there'd be an alleviation, and sometimes there wouldn't be. We'd get off the phone together, exhausted, and her still dealing with this pain. And, uh, she went to the hospital. The doctors told her that she had cancer. Um, what kind of cancer did they say that she had? Um, non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that they were going to begin treating her with chemotherapy. It said that she would uh, require a minimum of 12 treatments. So, we just continued to pray. We were praying before this and, of course, during. And I was praying as her father that there was nothing wrong with her. Amen. I'm her father. Amen. Praying against the words of these doctors who uh, really weren't very encouraging at all. The world wants to hedge its bets so that it doesn't ever appear wrong. So that no matter what happens to her, not caring for her, no matter what happens to her, they'd be correct. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they'll speak a whole widespread faithless circle around her. Yes, so so that no matter which way this event turns, no matter which way this event falls, oh, well, they're right. Yeah, so they, have, they keep what looks like they still have authority. Right. Speaking out of no authority, speaking out of fear. So. Even when I was, even when because the pain, um, I would be awake and heat up a heating pad for my back every hour. So I would be up at 12, 12 30, 1, 1 30, 2, 2 30, all the way up until 6 when I had to go to work. So I literally am real asleep. And be spending that time in bed crying from pain and then at work I'm trying to hold in vomit because I feel so sick and then I try to go home and relax and rest and I can't even lay down because it hurts to lay down and so when I went to the doctor just feeling terrible I got a call after my blood work and the doctor called me at work and he said um what are you doing right now? I'm at work. Okay, well, it looks like you have cancer, either a lymphoma or leukemia. I'm not sure, so I'll send you to an oncologist. It's 3 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> wow. I don't know, but I had sleep. nothing to do at work, so I just I prayed and I listened to podcasts. and I don't want to tell anyone. I had to keep my composure. Um, and going through the hospital was hard, but ever since then, 
it's just been getting better and better. I was at the point where I couldn't even move my arms. I couldn't walk because the pain in my leg was so bad. After a few minutes getting ready to brush my teeth, I was in tears crying from pain. I felt miserable. And after the hospital, I've been getting stronger and stronger. I lost 40 pounds and I've been gaining like five pounds every two weeks, just gaining more weight. And in less than four treatments, I've been feeling so wonderful and better than I've felt in years. And the doctor wanted to do a scan early and they can't detect any cancer at all. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. two months of being diagnosed, not even treatments. So um, they still want me to finish the chemo to prevent relapse, but there is no cancer. And God's made it so easy for me. I mean, no symptoms, no real symptoms, other than nausea. Didn't lose your hair, none exactly. of that stuff that they normally go through. Praise God. And when we prayed, uh, your father, Pastor Tony and I, and you, we said, well, what can we agree on? Because your faith is not the only place where you could just believe for healing without going to the doctor. So we said, what can we agree on? Your dad and you said, well, let's agree for a supernatural healing, a quick healing. <coughs> and you may not remember it, but I said, all right, you're going to be healed within a third of what they're diagnosing. And it was literally less than a third of the time. We had we had prayed and I had said half. Yes. And then <laughs> that same day, Teresa and I were talking, and I hadn't told her what you and I had prayed yet. And then she said she prayed for half, so for six. Less than half, yes. And then yes. we yeah. we came into church uh this is several Sundays ago now and, uh, talking about this uh, attack and talking about doctors in the world, and then you spoke a third. Yeah, I'll try to find the video, but I, I know specifically I said you'll, you'll be fully recovered in less than a third of what they're expecting. Mm -hmm. God will meet as far as faith is that God's mm -hmm. faithful. Mm -hmm. God did a supernatural healing. They're only continuing to treat us, like Pastor Tony said, just in case something goes wrong, they don't look like they were wrong. Yeah. They already said, there's no trace of cancer in your body. You're cancer-free. Mm -hmm. God healed you. Diagnosed and healed of cancer under two months. Amen. I want to say something else, and I talked about this a little bit <laughs> when your girlfriend came to church. Um, about the life. And what I didn't get to say was this. The mere presence of Goliath put everybody in Israel, all of the Jews, in fear. Yes. All he had done was run his mouth open. Yeah. He hadn't slain anybody. Right. He hadn't slain anybody on that battlefield. He hadn't put one man or woman of God underneath his feet. He just said, I'm going to, and I boast, and I speak against you, and I speak against yeah, your I Lord, and I speak against your authority. Yeah. And shudder when you look at him. <clears throat> And hadn't done anything. And this froze place. the entire nation of Israel. Froze them in fear. Now, Goliath comes. This is another Goliath. Cancer is a tremendous Goliath in this world. And you say the word, it puts people in fear. That's because it is actually one of the one of the very <coughs> there's 39 categories of diseases. Jesus received 39 stripes. But even to this day, with all the tens of thousands of diseases, they all fall into 39 categories. Mm -hmm. A stripe for each one. Mm -hmm. And out of all those categories, cancer is the only one that everybody recognizes as probably a direct demon. It's a mere prince, uh, pronunciation of, of, the, of the name sends spirits of fear to people. Everyone who sees it yeah. is dead. Most people acknowledge that it is an actual demonic principality. So, now here, again, another <coughs> life has fallen. 
I'm not, I won't, and I won't allow anybody to ask, well, why was this giant allowed to enter the battlefield? The giant came to the battlefield. And God said, I'm going to slay this giant. And God did what he said he would do. Amen. And this was done. And it was done in a way and in a pattern so that nobody else could lay any claim for it except for God. The doctors wouldn't claim any of it. The doctors wouldn't claim healing for her. That's right. They said, be prepared to live with this at best the rest of your life. Also, you need to be prepared to die. And they told me the same thing. Now what has come forth is God has slain that giant and the power of the blood of Christ Jesus stood this woman up and did what he said he was going to do. Amen. So, why did the giant, why was it allowed to enter the battlefield? This is to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, don't get wrapped around, well, why did God allow this thing to creep out? God allowed this thing to creep out to the glory of Jesus Christ. And you better be satisfied with that. Amen. Because it's a wonderful thing. It's an encouraging Amen. thing. It's an uplifting thing. And it's a victory in Christ that she will take with her the rest of her life to take to others that are walking in darkness, that are covered in death. Amen. This is powerful testimony to the Word of God Amen. in this young woman. Amen. The, the authority of Christ was spoken over her in church, and she stands here before you today in that victory, and this standing up is glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 And you know, Jesus addressed that in the Gospel of John. He said, Father, I pray for the ones you've given me. I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but I pray that you keep them in the world. We, we ask questions that God's not given answers to. Why did this happen? Well, we're in the world. The world's cursed, and there's demons that are trying to control it. We're in their living room. There is a battle, and it's not a shock when you realize I'm in a battle. I don't have to ask, why are they shooting at me? Right. That comes with the territory. Amen. Jesus healed the blind man, and his disciples asked, well, who sinned his mother or his mm -hmm. father? He said, nobody sinned. Absolutely. Now, of course, if you were to track back the lives of this man's mother and father, of course, both of you sinned. But it wasn't through sin that made the man blind. And Jesus' response to that was, this is to the glory of God, our Father. Amen. That's it. Amen. And we will accept that, and we will receive it, because is it not glorious? Amen. Is it not great? Is she not here with us? Amen. And is God's word not true? Amen. 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 This Praise is beautiful Lord. ground. Thank Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. This, this is, this is a... Well, Darlene had a tumor in her brain that got supernaturally dissolved. Amen. It was the size Amen. of a walnut. Amen. That is huge. Yes. On the brain. Amen. Prayed. Went back. It was reduced to the size of a pea. Prayed again. Just Amen. like Jesus laid hands on him. Blind man, what do you see? Well, I see people, but they're fuzzy like trees. Pray it again. Right. Uh, you pray until you get the full result of what you want. Amen. And uh, okay, Jesus. pray it again. It was reduced down to a size of feet. Pray it again. It was reduced. Another MRI. Mm. This is medical proof. She's got the x-rays to show. It, it mm. went from a walnut to a size of smaller than a grain of sand. Oh, yeah. And then by then, yeah. she, she was so obvious that the miracle mm. was it. She never went back. It's gone. And it's Amen. gone. Every ball is up. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus. Tracy Preston Amen. brought his 85-year-old grandmother Amen. down five, five yes. weeks to live. Yes. Amen. Uh, terminal cancer of the anus. What? Amen. Hold her up here. Were you guys here then? We were here. She's 85 years old or older. She was a, just a frail, tiny little old woman. And a uh, little black lady. And just as sure as you believe in one, oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. I said, well, stand up, sis. God's going to heal you. I laid hands on the power of God. Old Baptist woman, the power of God hit her. Uh, slayed her in the spirit. She fell right on her butt. Mm. Where they passed her was even closer. Didn't feel a thing. Laid out in the spirit. Baptist woman, 80 some odd years old. Laid out in the spirit there for an hour and a half. Got up. Took her home. Went back. Got x-rays. Bam. Gone within a week. Every trace of it. Not only did she not die in five weeks, she's still alive today from what I know. And that was five years ago. This is the fourth account of absolute, absolute documented cancer being healed Jesus. in this church. Amen. Jesus Christ is the healer. Yes, Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise for it. Now, you look like you got something to share more. What is it? It's just unreal looking 
forget where I was two months ago. And not thinking I would get to this point. I knew I would. But I had back pain for years. And I'm, I can do just normal things. And not only is this to the glory of God, your faith is in great and been established and increased. And in that is the platform of your ministry. So the Lord would have you know that in this victory, by his grace that he's given me, he's also given birth to your ministry. Yes, Amen. So rejoice <coughs> manifold, rejoice exceedingly, because not only have you, uh, by the grace of God, got the enemy under your feet, it's also the 